So the same thing always happens when a new device launches. The media gets review units ahead of the official launch and we get to use them while we write our review. Then the press embargo lifts, every outlet posts their reviews and videos at the same time, writers and commenters go back and forth, and it's a huge frenzy of opinion and buzz for about a day. And then it all goes away. Sure, there's some follow-up coverage, but after that initial blast, almost no one revisits the device to see how well it's aged. Because we're all on to the next big thing already. So let's do something about it. Let's take another gander at a smartphone that some might say hasn't even gotten off the ground yet. I'm Michael Fisher, this is the Samsung Ative S, and this is episode 16 of Pocket Now's After the Buzz. We've been doing After the Buzz for about a year now, which gives us a pretty good sense of how well different platforms ripen over time. With a larger ecosystem, more visibility, and near constant stability on most devices, Windows Phone 8 appears to be aging like a fine wine. And the Ative S hardware continues to prove itself a good match for Microsoft's underdog OS. The problem, at least here in America, is that no one knows what this device is, because it's not currently offered by any major carrier. And despite the novelty that the status of a hot overseas phone normally carries, the phone is so understated in design that no one really even notices it on the street. The Ative S may well be the most under-celebrated flagship in Windows Phone's history. That hardware isn't too groundbreaking on the inside. As we told you in our full review in December, the 1.5 GHz Qualcomm S4 SoC, 1 GB of RAM, HSPA, Bluetooth 3.0, NFC, and 16 gigs of onboard storage are all pretty vanilla by Windows Phone standards, though the Ative S stood out then and continues to stand out, thanks in part to its large 4.8-inch Super AMOLED display, microSD support, and a removable 2300 milliamp hour battery. That makes it a lot more versatile than the Lumia 920 and HTC 8X, the devices comprising the bulk of its competition. Since the landscape hasn't changed much since December, the Ative S continues to dominate the Windows Phone 8 space in terms of sheer specs and adaptability. Unfortunately, the phone is covered in a thick sheath of unimposing normalcy that obscures those powerful innards. After five months of exposure to newer, better hardware design, the chassis that we first considered elegant in its reserved faux metallic sheen now appears somewhat staid and dull. It's still beautiful in its own way. That hairline aluminum finish on the plastic battery cover is still, far and away, the best fake metal we've seen. But it's aging more rapidly than we expected, and the glossy finish definitely doesn't do the device any favors in the in-hand feel department in the long term you'll be wiping it down constantly as it acquires more and more skin oil. From a build perspective, the Ative S stands out from the pack less and less with each passing month. That is, until the screen flares to life. It may not pack the pixel density of today's 1080p Goliaths, but this panel continues to serve Windows Phone beautifully in all its super-saturated 720p glory. It's still the biggest screen out there for Windows Phone from a major manufacturer, and we think it still does the best job of bringing Microsoft's Metro UI to life. As for the OS itself, in Windows Phone's effectively skinless environment, the only thing differentiating devices is the custom app selection. Here, there's bad news and good news. The bad news is that Samsung's app repository in the Windows Store, the predictably titled Samsung Zone, is just as fallow as we left it in December, having added only one or two titles over the five months in between. That's a pretty weak showing, and perhaps it's reflective of the somewhat passionless relationship between Samsung and Microsoft, at least in terms of Windows Phone. The good news, though, is that in the time since our review, Nokia has released its excellent Hear suite to all Windows Phone devices, including the Ative S. That means Hear Maps, Hear Drive Beta, and here Transit all run on the Samsung device, and they run quite well. That's not a development unique to the Ative S, but it significantly improves the utility of all Windows Phone 8 devices, so it's a very important and welcome development. We just wish Samsung would start bringing its own improvements to the Windows Phone portfolio. One of the takeaways from our previous review was that if you like Windows Phone, you'll love running it on the Ative S, and that continues to hold true today. Windows Phone works well together with Samsung's beefy hardware, and the fact that you can carry spare batteries and memory cards to enhance the device continues to set it apart. 
Our GTI 8750 version of the Ativas doesn't pack LTE, but we're not going to dock points for that, as we're sure the American carrier version will, assuming it ever lands on US shores. Performance over HSPA Plus and AT&T was slower than our experience on T-Mobile's network, though we had coverage in more places and almost never fell back to Edge, which was nice. Talking on the Ativas is fine, though we were reminded of the unit's light and insubstantial build quality every time we spoke, as our voice resonated with something inside the unit, giving us a somewhat hollow sound in our own ear. Callers said we sounded fine, though, and noise cancellation appeared to work well. Given enough light and color to work with, the Ativ S camera, which is the same as the Galaxy S3s and Note 2s, continues to hold up well, even against modern competition like the HTC One, Lumia 920, and Galaxy S4. The lack of a 13-megapixel sensor isn't hurting it much. This 8-megapixel unit can really turn out some wonderful, if slightly oversaturated, photos, given the right conditions. The camera offers nearly the same expandability as other Windows phones via its lens functionality, but there's very little in terms of Samsung-specific customizations. Overall, the camera module continues to do well, despite being over a year old. After nearly half a year, the Ativ S is a mixed bag. We're concerned that Samsung hasn't released fixes for a few nagging issues, like the display auto-brightness fluctuation problem, and we're pretty sure the phone will never truly get its day in the sun here in the States. Even if the rumor of Sprint picking it up as one of its first Windows Phone 8 smartphones is true, it'll be an older device on a third-place network. That's not a recipe for a blockbuster that lasts. It's a momentary stay of execution for a could-have-been superstar about to be relegated to the mid-range. The Ativ S is a great example of what could happen if Samsung and Microsoft ever decide to team up in a big way. Considered alongside the rest of the current Windows Phone lineup, the Ativ S more than holds its own. It brings a touch of conservatism and pragmatic utility to the otherwise bright and colorful Microsoft Windows Phone portfolio, and that in itself continues to be valuable. We just wish the phone had really had a chance to shine in the States and we wonder what its probable fizzle means for the future of Samsung Windows phones. Folks, that's going to do it for this episode of After the Buzz. To see our videos as soon as they go live, subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. Also, drop us a like if you enjoyed the video. Leave us a comment if you have something to say. Visit us at pocketnow.com for much more coverage on the Ativ S and other mobile devices, and stay tuned for a lot more. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.